بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله We reach the 15th point in the treaties of Shara Sunnah by Imam Baba Hari رحمه الله تعالى وقال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى ولا يقول في صفات الرب كيف ولما إلا شاك في الله تبارك وتعالى والقرآن كلام الله وتنزيله ونوره ليس بمخلوق لأن القرآن من الله وما كان من الله فليس بمخلوق وهكذا قال مالك بن أنس وأحمد بن هنبل والفقهاء قبلهما وبعدهما والمراء فيه كفر بين مصنف رحمه الله تعالى something very very important because as we've heard statements even recently from again du'at who should not who should restrain themselves with the things they speak about falling into mistakes saying the mushaf is not the Quran it's not the speech of Allah it's created, things like this. These types of shubahat are things that the Salaf closed the door to. They didn't speak about. So then when you have people who have nothing of knowledge compared to the Salaf of this Ummah, and nothing of the knowledge compared to the ulama of this Ummah, and hardly anything of knowledge even compared to the tulab al-ilm fi hadhi Ummah, and then they speak about the Qur'an like it's nothing. They may issue fatawa like nothing and this is shameful and this is an actualization of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which we mentioned before that du'at would be out of Abu Abu Jahannam that there would be people at the gates of the hellfire calling to it and the people would follow oh I love so and so so and so is so uh, knowledgeable as, as they think uh, so and so is uh, really a good speaker so and so doesn't speak about people is very nice so and so is this, and the people follow. So Imam Baba Hari Rahimullah Ta'ala said, Our Lord, or he said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, no one says about the attributes of the Lord, the Most High. Why? No one should say this. Question why? Except one who doubts about Allah, the Blessed and Most High. The Qur'an is the speech of Allah, His revelation and light. It is not created. Since the Qur'an is from Allah, and that which is from Allah is not created. This is what Malik bin Anas, Ahmed bin Hanbal, and the scholars before them and after them said, and debating about it is kufr. This is a statement of Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala, as we mentioned, a 4th century scholar, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the salaf of this ummah, one of our salaf, mentioning that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, it is an attribute of Allah. All of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes have been with Him eternally and remain with Him. So when we say Ar Rahman Ala Ars Istoa, Istoa is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't say he stopped. But we refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who Mustawiyan Ala Arsh. He's above his throne and he rose above his throne and he continues to rise, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is Alu, he has the, the Alu. He has the he's above his creation and separate from his creation, subhanahu. He possesses all of those divine names and attributes and they're not created. And the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an, is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of what the people say, the people who come up with newly invented matters and fall into misguidance and speak without knowledge, who say the mushaf is not the Qur'an, what's contained in it is not the Qur'an, or the sound of your voice, the sound is not the Qur'an, and all the other shubahat that they bring. All of this is absolutely 
dangerous and critical that we understand and that our mokif is sound and sahih. That we have a, a, a strong position based on Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf of this Ummah. How did the Salaf see this? So Imam Babahari, he mentioned that it's not permissible to question, ask how or why. The author mentioned with regards to this in his ta'liqat قال لا يقو في صفات الرب تعالى لما إلا مبتدعا مفتون صاحب الحوى نهجه غير الطريق المستقيم واتبع السبول المضلة أو مضلة وأحسن الظن بنفسه وعقله Very important statement, he said. He said, with regards to the editorial on uh, the statement of Imam Baba Hari, he said, and do not say, or that a person should not say, about the characteristics of the Lord, the Almighty. How? Should not question it or say why. The only one who does this is an innovator who is miftun, who is a person who is tested in his own intellect and tested with his own uh, iman and a person of desires. And his minhaj or his way, his path is other than the path, uh, other than the straight path. And he follows the path, the, the paths of myth, misguidance. And he has a good opinion about himself and his own intellect and what he follows, but he has a evil or pessimistic view about the Quran and the Sunnah. Why? Because he believes that he, his, his intellect, his understanding of Kitab wa Sunnah is correct over the Quran, the Nasus themselves in the Quran and the speech of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his Sunnah and the understanding of the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'een and those who follow them bi ihsan al deen So when a person chooses another path when they begin to distort the sifat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or negate them altogether or try to attempt to change their meaning or ask how then it is if they're putting their intellect above the understanding of the Sahaba who didn't ask these questions, who accepted the revelation as it was, accepted what Allah said, and they accepted what the Messenger of Allah explained to them and what he said. They didn't ask how, they didn't ask why, and they didn't distort the haqq and choose their intellect, and choose battle over the truth. Then he goes on to say, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ نَزَهُ تَعَالَى عَنْ فَوْكِيَتِهِ عَلَىٰ عَرْشِهِ بَائِنٍ مِنْ خَلْكِهِ وَوَاقِعْ فِي أَعْظَمْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ حَيْثَ اَتَّقِدَ أَنَّهُ فِي كُلِّ مَكَانٍ so that some people, with regards to this, and they're going astray, there are some who actually begin to say about the Almighty to be little, or to actually say that He is not uh, above His creation, and that He is not above His, his arsh, His throne removed from it and removed from his creation and they actually fall into even things which are worse than that and believe some of them believe that Allah the Almighty is, in, is everywhere Fikuli Makan so a person who has this belief this facet belief saying Allah is everywhere 
is now put the creator in the creation, a type of uh, anthropomorphism and a, t a belief in which they believe that the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, that he is everywhere, even in the places that are most unbefitting of, of anyone. Like in the, the filthy places. If you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere, you're saying He is everywhere. He's contained everywhere. You're in the restroom, akramakum Allah, then you're saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. Wa'iyadu billah min dhalika. Or you're doing such and such and such and such. However, His ilm, His knowledge encompasses everything. Naam. But to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere, this is false, this is batil. This is a itqad facet. And some of them, even as we mentioned, place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most lowly of places. That they belittle Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and say that He is in the creation and that He is in the worst of places as well. Wa'iyadu billah bin dalika. And this is from false ittiqad. And this, is, this illustrates for us the importance of the correct creed. And that it's not a matter of just vain argumentation and theological debate. But in fact, this forms your whole orientation about what you believe and who you believe your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. What you believe about Allah and who you believe Allah is. Is formed by these so-called trivial theological debates as some of the people say. وَعِيَذِ بِاللَّهِ الدَّالِكَ and some of them, they try to remove Allah's loftiness and His highness. Take away that from their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And make Him as if He is, he is uh, one with the creation. Totally. Those people who have wahta to wujud, that they believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everything. That everything is Allah. وَعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Look at the type of kufr and the type of zandaka that bid'ah and people's intellect will lead them to. If they do not, يَتَحَاكَمُونَ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةُ الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ وَفَاهِمَ السَّلَفِ هَذِهِ أُمَّةِ Then you'll see where they go astray. If they don't make their judgments, if they don't form their creed and their manners and all of their religion from the Qur'an and from the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and have a muqayyid. This is restricted to the understanding of the Salaf and this Ummah. Then you'll see people, you're going to hear and see so many weird and strange things. As we see today, as we hear statements that were never he before heard in the history of Islam, some of these statements that we hear, even some of these so called du'at that are calling, supposedly calling to Islam, they're making people feel good. Naam. And some people might be guided, alhamdulillah to a greater or lesser extent. But ultimately, what are they doing? They're coming up with bid'ah un, unheard of in the ummah and the whole history of Islam. Some of the statements that they make and belittling the issue of creed. Who before, and this is not to continue on with the issue with Nu'man, but who before him, men sabaka bi hadha qawl, to say that it's not important to have theological debates. And it's not about debates, but have, you know, that theological issues are unimportant. Even the people of bid'ah and kufr that, that preceded those kind of, those kind of innovate, innovated statements. Those people didn't even say things like that. The Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila, the uh, the Ashaira, all of these these uh, sects that existed in throughout the history of Islam that appeared and, and went away in the Qadariya, even they themselves held on to their wicked belief and belie believed that creed was imperative. But only now in this day and age do we have people say, oh, we can study Tawheed in five minutes. Oh, Tawheed is not so important. Oh, let's focus on what's, what the Qur'an gives precedence in the community. The Qur'an gives Tawheed precedence. The precedence is the Qur'an. And the Qur'an 
gives precedence to Tawheed. Isn't that at least a third of the Qur'an? Talking about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Him and Him alone, Tawheed al-Ibadah, wa Tawheed al-Rububi, wa Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, wa Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. Isn't that a huge part of the Qur'an? And is it not a huge part of the Sunnah? And didn't the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam call to it to 13 years in Mecca? So yes, we do need to get our priorities straight. And we need to quit speaking without knowledge. May Allah guide us and guide our brothers in Islam. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And the one who falls into these kind of distortions about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one with his creation, or Allah is everywhere, or all these other innovative uh, beliefs which are a part of bid'ah mukaffara, the kind of bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam if you say Allah is everywhere, you say Allah is one with the creation, and uh, obviously depending upon what you meant by that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere, there's tafsil in that. But these people who make these kind of statements, some of them went to the extent like the Jahmiyyah, وَوَصَبَهُ adam al وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْ ذَلِكْ That some of them like the Jahmiyyah, they described Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being non-existent because anything that does not contain characteristics does not exist. So the Jahmiyyah, when they describe, they don't, they, they speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they may affirm his, his names, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman, without Rahman. So they say that he is the most merciful without mercy. They negate the meaning of those sifat, and they just make them just names. So then the ulama say, anything that you describe, and this is a part of the logic in refuting uh, this innovative creed of the Jahmiyyah and other than them, <coughs> is that anything that does not have a, a characteristic does not exist. So, for example, the book that we're looking at there, Shara Usul As-Sunnah, there's a title, that's the name of the book. If we just say, if anyone asks about this book, and they say, well, tell me about the book. And I just say, well, it's Shara Usul Sunnah. And they say, well, can you describe it to me? Uh, no, Shara Usul Sunnah. You know, that, that doesn't make sense in any, to any one of intellect. But aside from giving that book a title, the book has characteristics. It has a color, a green color. It has red and it has silver trimming and silver uh, or gold uh, trimming and, and gold for the letters of the title. And many other characteristics pertinent to that book, which gives it substance so that we can even describe it or talk about it. So something that has no characteristics does not exist. And that's the point. And this is in refutation or in opposition to the Jahmiyyah who tried to describe or say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirming his names without affirming his attributes. Because they're afraid of tashbih, they're afraid of making a resemblance between Allah and his creation. Meaning that if you say that Allah rose above his throne, then the creation rises. So then they say, huh, oh, you're making tashbi. But no, the creation rises, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stowa ala arsh. Well, I can lace commit to as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. But there is nothing like unto him. Letting us know that Allah's stowa is not like our sitting over something or raising above something. There's no comparison between the creation and the Creator. There's no comparison. They may share in name the characteristic of raising or descending 
as, as the Prophet sallallahu said in the Sahih Hadith, "Yanzulu Rabbuna tabarak wa taala kulu thulu al akhir that our Lord descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. He descends. So then Ahl Sunnah says, as the Prophet sallallahu said, that Allah descends. This is what we believe. The Prophet sallallahu believed it and said it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't speak from his desires. Nor did he go into detail and describe how, nor did he ask, but he, he told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Khabar Sahih descends to the lowest heaven, uh, descends to the lowest heavens every last third of the night. So we believe that. We don't know how, nor do we say, nor do we describe it and say it's like such and such, nor do we make a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending and something from amongst his creatures descending or a person descending from their chair or from some stairs or what have you. There's no comparison. And that ayat where Allah Taala says fi kitab al-kareem laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa samiu basir. In the the first part of the ayat laysa kamithlihi shay Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala negates that there's any tashbih between him and his creation that there's any resemblance between his divine characteristics and the characteristics of his creation. He negates that. Then he affirms that he, yes, possesses characteristics. Sifat. Wahua Samil Basir. Allah said this in the Quran. You can't deny this ayah, this hujjah, this dalil, this evidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negated that there's a resemblance between him and his creation. And he affirmed that he subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses divine attributes, divine names and attributes. He is the all hearing, the all seeing. Do people hear and see? Yes. But there's no comparison. Why? Because ours is limited. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is perfect and free from any imperfections. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And the one who follows that path, meaning away from the understanding of the Salaf with regards to al asmai wa Sifat and other issues of Ittiqad in the religion, then they are a person who has chosen misguidance over guidance, crookedness over straightness, darkness over light. And Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala said, well, Quran kalam Allah wa tanzilahu. وَنُورُهُ لَيْسَ مَخْلُوكَ لَأَمَّ الْقُرْآنَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَلَيْسَ بِمَخْلُوكَ وَهَكَذَا قَالَ مَالِكِ بِنْ عَنَسِ وَأَحْمِدْ بِنْ هَنْبَلْ وَالْفُقَهَا قَبْلَهُمَا وَبَعْدَهُمَا وَمِرَاءُ فِيهِ كُفْرَ So he said, uh, the Qur'an is the speech of Allah, His revelation and light. It is not created since the Qur'an is from Allah. And that which is from Allah is not created. This is what Imam Malik bin Anas said. And this is what Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal said. And the scholars before them and after them said. And debating about it is disbelief. Imam Malik said, The Quran is the speech of Allah. It is not created. And this was reported by Imam al laqai Imam Ahmed said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, He was asked, about the one who says that the Qur'an was created. So he said, he is a disbeliever. And this is also reported in al laqai in Shara Usul Al-Itiqad, Ahl Sunnah. So Imam Ahmed was asked about the one who says the Qur'an was created because this was the creed of the Jahamiyyah. They said Allah, uh, the Qur'an was created, makhluk. <clears throat> and so the Salaf of this Ummah, they made takfir of the Jahabiyyah for this reason. And with regards to this, Al-Musannif rahimahullah ta'ala yuthbitu madhab ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. So Imam Baba Hari affirmed the madhab or the minhaj, the methodology or the way of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. And that is, Anna al-Qur'ana kalam Allah 
وتنزيله ونوره وليس بمخلوق. And this this minhaj, this aspect of minhaj, this aspect of creed, of اعتقاد, this aspect of the madhab of the salaf of this ummah of ahlu sunnati wal jamaa, is that the Quran is the speech of Allah. It was it's his revelation. It's his light, and it is not created. لأن the Quran من Allah, and this is because the Quran is from Allah. And this is in opposition to the statements of the Jahmiya wa Mu'tazila, who said, بأن the Quran a مخلوق وعيد خلاف لل واقفة القائلين بأن the Quran كلام الله ووووقفوا فيه. وعيد خلاف للفضية القائلين بأن اللفظ القرآن مخلوق تعالى الله عن ذلك. So this is in opposition to the statements of the Jahmi and the Mu'tazila, who are the ones who said that the Quran is uh, created. And also this is in opposition, meaning this creed of Ahl Sunnah, this point of creed that the Quran is not created غير مخلوق, and that it's from Allah and it's His revelation and it's His speech. This also uh, is in opposition to the statements of the Waqifa. The Waqifa were those who, who said the Qur'an is the speech of Allah, but then they were silent and uh, didn't take a position, uh, although they believed that the Qur'an was the speech of Allah, they didn't take a position with regards to the fitna of the Qur'an being called makhluk. Uh, created. So they had a, a position where they just stopped and said, hey, basically we don't want to get into this argument. So even them, the Salaf used to consider them uh, innovators because they didn't take a position, the correct position of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah, which is supported by the Quran itself and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. And likewise, those people who say that the, the uh, pronouncement of the Qur'an is created and Allah is free from all of that misguidance. Imam Ajuri, Ajuri said fi sharia, قَالُوا وَلَقَدْ دَلَّ عَلَى ذَلِكَ الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُنَّةِ وَقُولُوا صَحَابَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَنَا عَنْهُمْ وَقُولُوا أَعِمَّةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لَا يَنْكَرُهُ إِلَّا جَهْمِ خَبِيثِ وَالْجَهْمِ عند العلماء كافر. So Imam Al Ajuri summed up the mokif of the Salaf, and there's so many statements of the Salaf pertinent to this. We could spend hours going over their statements, but we'll just suffice with this. This is this yakfina. Imam Al Ajuri said fi Al Al Ajuri said fi Sharia. He said that the text of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the statements of the Sahaba and the statements of the Imams of the Muslims all are evidence to support that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the only ones who deny this and none of them deny this except the Jahmi or al Jahmiya, the sect that believed that the Qur'an was makhluk and negated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, divine attributes uh, and, and many other mukhalafat in their creed. And he said, إِلَّا جَهْمِ خبيث. He said, like, only people who deny this are wicked jahmi. And then he said, وَالْجَهْمِ عِنْدَ الْعُلَمَاء kafir." And he said, and the Jahmi, the person who has the belief in the creed of the Jahmiya, is a kafir to the, is a disbeliever to the ulama of Islam. The ulama of Ahl Sunnah. And then he brought some of the evidence. Qala Allah Ta'ala, وَإِنْ أَهَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَى كَلَامَ الله. This is Surah Tawbah, Ayat 6, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if one of the mushriks 
one of the pagans uh, is your your neighbor, uh, then be uh, neighborly towards him until he hears the uh, so that he hears the speech of Allah. And this is evidence, a wajid dalala here, the, the way in which this text supports the premise that we stated is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Hatta yasma'a kalam Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to his speech or the Quran as his speech. Kalam Allah. Letting us know that what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses kalam. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, all of his books, they contain the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the original Bible or the Injil, the original Torah uh, of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the original uh, uh, Psalms of David or the, the Zubur, and all the other books, the Suhf of Ibrahim wa Musa, the Suhf of Ibrahim and Musa, that those books and the other books are all the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the original text of those books. But we do not contain those books in this day and age. They have been distorted and tampered with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Qur'an and the Qur'an is the final message. It's the message that we have. And the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. And do not listen to those people who try to cause doubt in the religion. Maybe, I'm... 100% sure, or I'm 90% sure they say this out of ignorance, not out of a wish to misguide people. But the fact is, they're misguiding people because they've spoken out of ignorance and they spoke about things they should not have spoken about. Those do act, and they don't need to be named, but I think they're well known, who say that the Mus'haf is not the speech of Allah, or that the Mus'haf is created, or all these other... Uh, in fact, false accusations against the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would be better for them just to be quiet. Keep silent if you don't know what you're talking about. If the issue is too complicated, too complex for you, then just keep silent. Don't open doors that are, are, are unnecessary. This goes against the madhab of the salaf. This goes against that which will protect and save you because the madhab of the salaf is ahkam. And a fuck that the method of the Salaf, the way of the Salaf, has more wisdom and has more benefit and is more is the most correct way and is the correct way over all the other madhahib, all the other ways that people come up with and their intellect leads them to believe. That's just some. There's countless statements of the Salaf supporting and, and, and ayats and, and so forth to support that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Quran is his speech and it's uncreated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, uh, Fi kitab al-kareem, Ala al khalq wal amr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and isn't it for him the creation and the amr? And how is this delil that the Qur'an is, is not makhluk, is not created? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the command other than the creation. Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah lahu al khalq wal amr. Isn't it for him the, the creation? And the command, or the, or the affair, or however they translate it. Showing us al-amr, ghayr khalq, wal Quran min al-amr. The point being here is that the amr, the commandments, or the, the command, or the affair, is not created. And it's in reference to the Quran, wal Quran min al-amr. And the Qur'an is from the command. Letting us know that is evidence to show us that ayat, which is in Surah Al-A'raf, ayat 54, to show us that the 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself distinguishes between his creation and his amr. Letting us know his command is not created. And his command is in reference to the Quran. And there are many ayats which illustrate for us this and much of the sunnah. And countless statements of the salaf and we'll stop there and maybe in the next sitting we will go into some of those statements because it is an imperative issue that does not need to be uh, that needs to be given its right and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.